Let's start with the Sunday Times, Scott. All right. Uh, in the Sunday Times, uh, uh, well, there's a couple of things on the front page. Th this thing you mentioned about the BBC chairman, I think he's about to be replaced. Right. Uh, we're at £800,000 loan. So I wish I would have talked to him about getting loaned first before this happened. But anyway, Tavistock scandal is on par with East Germany's doping of athletes, it says in the Sunday Times. Um, this is a, the Child Gender Clinic. It is a, a book has been written by a woman who's a, a Newsnight journalist, and she, they spoke to dozens of journalists who worked at um, the Gender Identity Ve Development Service (GIDS), uh, which is part of the Tavistock Appointment NHS Trust. Uh, and at that uh, clinic, that service, they uh, helped uh, young people deal with their trans feelings. Well, but some of the ways they did it now are seen as circumspect. One was. Uh, a thousand children were, were referred for pu puberty blockers at the experimental clinic, and uh, they routinely referred under 16s for these blockers, which probably wasn't a great idea. Well, and a lot of these children, people, children as young as three, were yeah. being referred. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that you know perhaps some people uh, have gender dysphoria right. and uh, you know identify as another gender, and sometimes hormones and surgery and all the rest of it can be the best path for them. Later. Three. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's a bad idea. A three. Yeah, it's a really small number of appointments as well. Sometimes you're reading that people have just been once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And made this decision. Often and they've once. given the binder and the whole thing. Right. In the book, former clinicians at Gids Service speak for the first time in detail of their regret about the practice of routinely referring under 16, as you said, for puberty blocking and cross-hormone treatment with no concrete data on long-term effects. They were guinea pigs. Yeah. They were experimenting. Except they're not even uh, recording the data to yeah. find out how many of them detransition, how many of them regret it, and there are, there are thousands. There's, there's class action. Yeah, a lot uh, of kids do regret it. Against the Tavistock, yeah. and yeah, it's, yeah. It's, been, it's been closed down, and now, you know, Thankfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's going to be treated a different way, but it, it sounds awful. They're making so much money, apparently 30%. Uh, Thirty percent of the money for for this NHS trust came mm. from the Tavistock mm. clinic, I believe. Uh, one of the revelations. Revelations. You can make a lot of money on people's misery. You know, when people are vulnerable, as young people almost always are, yeah. and very young people are, when they're when they're fragile, when they're when they're wondering what, what's going to happen next. You, they, it sounds like they pounce. Yeah. I hate to speak mm -hmm. negatively about the NHS. They saved my life in 2013, but it does sound in this case like this went almost unchecked yeah. by outside clinicians. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cressida, I mean, are you surprised that uh, giving drugs to children and then mutilating their genitals turned out to not always be the best course of action? I'm not surprised. I think what's really sad is that the, the, so many of these people, they're saying that a, lot, a lot of the children have got autistic traits and mm. that if they had just been left alone, given some therapy, some yeah. talking therapy, but you don't make as much money, I guess, out of mm. talking yeah. therapy. And I think the parents, we've discovered, some of the parents didn't want their kids to be gay. So in the interim, what they decided to do was change the gender. Well, indeed, and this is what happens in Iran. Yes, Iran has got is. one of the highest rates of gender transitioning yes, in the it world, is. and it's because it's illegal to be gay. Well, they tell Iran. you we're going to kill you or change your gender, which choice do you make? Yeah, yeah. And I think these kids felt as though, obviously, doctors are telling them something, their parents are telling them something. They felt under a lot of pressure, and of course, they caved and they did what they were told. They took pills, they wore the binder, they had surgery, they had their breasts removed, they had mastectomies at the age of 12. Oh, so you would because when you're when yeah. you're very young and you feel lost, you you know you some really? people become goths. Oh, you know? yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's not the only other option. The terrible I mean, thank, story. Thank God the NHS wasn't uh, you know surgically transitioning people to being goths. That would have been a whole you know that when I was young eye shadow. When I was fourteen, you know we changed uh, schools and we moved to the countryside. So I had to get home on my own at night, and I was hitchhiking and I met a lot of people that way. And I was very vulnerable. I, I feel like I'm lucky to be alive, yeah. you know. And I know what it's like to be vulnerable and, and knowing that you, you're not what you're, what you're feeling, what you're thinking is not maybe normal yeah. in a good or a bad way, you know. Or it's just different and you want it to change. You want to be like everybody else. And suddenly you're in the care of this person mm. and you, you do what you're told. Yes. Yeah. terrible. But you'd hope at least a state institution would, uh, would treat you better than somebody picks you up hitchhiking. Uh, which the NHS doesn't seem to have done in this case. They didn't it, buy anyone a free meal like some of those guys did with me. <laughs> nice. A couple lines of code. Anyway.